Hey there, happy coders, and welcome to part three of my 20th anniversary processing celebration video series. So in the past couple videos, in the first video I downloaded processing, and I have it now as a handy little shortcut. In the second video, I uh, wrote a processing program that used the Stack Overflow API to uh, get data about questions in the processing tag and I, I massage that data into a like a, a file that's easier to deal with so I went from something that looked like this where it's a bunch of JSON with a bunch of data that I, I don't really care about um, and I took that processed it through through my through my program from the last video and output this this file, which is hopefully a little easier to deal with. Um, so my goal with this video that you're currently watching is to use the, the file that I created in the last video to create some kind of data visualization. And I have some, some vague idea that what I want to do is create like a chart that's kind of similar to a chart that I have up on Happy Coding, kind of like this chart, or or maybe like this chart, where I I chart the the questions in the stack or in the processing tag on Stack Overflow um, over time. Okay, so that's my plan with this video. Um, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, maybe I should start there. So this weekend is uh, processing's twentieth anniversary celebration so there's a bunch of different events happening and different folks are celebrating in, in different ways and the way I am going to celebrate is to create this this data visualization using data from from Stack Overflow so um, I, I've been pretty involved in the Stack Overflow community in, in the processing tag and I, I think it'd be a fun little project because um, this is kind of how I got into the processing world and data visualization is a big thing that processing is used for and honestly I, I haven't really used it for that purpose so this is kind of me learning as I go as well. Um, so I've used the Stack Overflow API and a lot of these tabs are actually left over from the previous video so maybe I'll start by closing some of these. This is always a very cathartic exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so where am I? So I've got the the file and I got my goal and that's about it. I haven't really done anything else. So what I wanna do is first off, I'm gonna open up processing, open up a new sketch in processing, the, the new and improved processing version 4.0, which very exciting, very blue, very pretty. Um, it is a little silly that this keeps popping up, even though this isn't checked. Maybe that's a little bug, but that's okay. So what do I want to do? Um, <laughs> good question. Um, so my end goal is to create something like this in processing by reading in the file. So maybe I'll start by reading in the file. Maybe actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll start with um, like a basic window so I'm going to have my setup and my draw functions and this is kind of fun for me because I haven't actually coded in processing or Java in, in quite some time um, I haven't coded in in processing or Java in quite some time so I'm kind of like relearning the syntax a little bit I've been using p5 and JavaScript for, for a while anyway this is kind of kind of interesting but I might mess up the syntax is my is what I'm trying to say so let's just run this, see what happens. I've got my little window, nothing, nothing to see yet. Um, I'm gonna maybe save this already to something called like stack, stack overflow data visualizer, something like that. Doesn't really matter. I don't know if I spelled that word right, but who cares? Okay. So what I want to do, I want to read in the file. So actually, first off, I need to maybe copy the file over. So processing questions.json, I'm going to just move that over here. Um, that stays there. And I get that 
in my sketch folder in data and there it is okay so i believe that that means that i can do something like json array um, processing array i don't know processing questions processing questions array doesn't really matter and i'm going to create that in setup and i'm going to say um, something like processing questions equals load json array and i want to give it the name of that file which i think is processing questions.json i can double check what should i call that thing processing questions.json yeah and then what can i do i can do something like just print it out just to test that it's working so like work very incrementally processing questions.size okay so that should load the JSON array from my file and then just print the size. And it does, okay, it's just kind of hidden. Okay, 6265, that sounds, sounds familiar from the last video. All right, so it's loaded and now what do I wanna do? I want to, I wanna draw it um, and maybe I'll start by maybe, um, maybe having it animated, so I could just write a for loop that goes through all of them, but I think what I actually want to do to make it a little bit more interesting to watch is, um, is to draw it in an animated way. So maybe I'll have like int um, current index or something like that, current processing index equals zero. And what I want to do, I want to take that. So here's what I want to do. Okay. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, okay, I want to do this uh, the dumb way first, and then I'm going to make it a little smarter. So um, what can I do? I can do int um, current, uh, is current value, or do I want the current date? Um, previous, uh, so I don't want like today's date. I want the date from this file. So if I open that up, this is an array with uh, these integers in it. Um, and each of these corresponds to a date. Um, hmm. I think what I first need to do is get the first date and the last date. Yeah, let's try that. So int first date, int last date, and here's where I can do that. I can say first date equals processing questions dot I think it's like get int zero. Yeah, and then I can do last date equals processing questions dot get int processing questions dot get in. Wait, get, um, I just want size minus one. Okay. And I'm going to print this out just to double check myself. First date and print line last date. Again, I'm just like loading the data still just to just to make sure that this is doing what I expect. Hit run and I should see, okay, 7598 is the first one, 7598, okay. And then the last one, make sure I'm not off by one, 5079 and 5079. Okay, so that's, that's working. And I can use that to um, calculate like for each index how far um, how far from the left edge of the screen we should be. So what do I want to do? I want to say int uh, current date. Current date is kind of a bad name for this variable because not today's date. It's just the current like index date, but whatever. Um, equals what processing questions dot get int um, with the index current processing index a lot of copy paste blah 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 and then down here I eventually want to do current processing index plus plus and maybe I'll say like if current processing index is what greater than or equal to processing questions dot size then then like no draw or like whatever I can do a bunch of things or there's no no loop is what it's called no loop I think maybe no draw would be a better name anyway um okay so I've got my current date and what do I want to do with that 
I want to mm, calculate like an X value. So there's a couple ways I could do this. If I go to my reference here and there's like a lerp function I might be able to use. Um, what does this take? This takes start, stop, and amount between zero and one. I basically want to do what this function does, but I think figuring out the amount would basically be most of the work anyway. So maybe let's do it manually. Um, so I want to say like uh, float current x equals what? Uh, so it's basically going to be, I want to think about this kind of as I go. So it's going to be zero plus. I, I don't need that part, but it kind of helps me think. So it's the left edge of the screen plus the... So actually what I need is maybe the total duration. So int duration equals last date minus first date. So this is the distance between the, um, the first date in my array and the last date in my array. And then what can I do? I can say okay okay i think i have an idea so this is the total duration this is like and then i need to get like the, the current duration or like um current time from first date uh, this is kind of a goofy variable name but it doesn't matter um maybe i'll change this to duration current duration from first date is current date minus first date right um, so this gives us like the distance from the from the first date, and I think what I can do is say float current like percentage or something like current. Um, actually, I'm going to turn these into floats already because I need this to be like float division, not int division. Whatever, it's easy easy way to do it. Um, and I think I can do just duration divided by Actually, it's the other way around. Current duration from first date divided by duration. I should have called that something like total duration, maybe. Mm -mm -mm. I know I'm writing a lot of code before I test it, but like a lot of this is kind of necessary to to um, just to get something on the screen. And maybe I could have done it a little bit different, but it's fine. Float and um, current ratio or current percent something like that equals that and now what I can do now I can kind of use the lerp function it's kind of it doesn't really matter but um because it's just gonna be width times that but whatever maybe maybe this will make my life easier in a second current x equals lerp and then I want to give it zero width and current percent this is going to end up just being width times current percent, but I might play with these values in a minute. So let's try that. And next, what I want to do, I, just to get something on the screen, um, I'm going to do like line um, from current x to, 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 to oh, this is going to be interesting. Um, so current x and then my y, let's start it out at height and then current x and then here's where it's going to get interesting so i'm going to draw from the bottom of the screen up one and just just to get something working i know i've been coding for a long time without actually showing anything so i'm going to say like float current y equals um zero current height current current height is a better word for that current height equals zero and I'm going to say like height minus current height, just like the height of the bar that I want to show. And every time I see one, I want to say current height plus equals some, some number, maybe one, but maybe point 0.1 to start with. All right, that was a lot. And I kind of just am impatient to see what, what this looks like. So let me try that. Okay, okay, that's not bad actually. So you can kind of see the the effect I'm going for, where this is this is kind of a graph. <laughs> um, maybe it's, maybe the animation is a little slow, um, 
but you can see over time the uh, the value going up. And maybe while that runs, because I'm kind of curious just to see what it looks like, I'll, I'll kind of explain what I did here because I know that was a lot of code to throw, uh, throw at the wall. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the current date, which is just one of these numbers. So here I'll start at the top. So this the first number, second number, third number, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's an array of, of dates. So I get the current date. And then I could have calculated this at the very beginning. Maybe I will eventually. Um, I get the total duration, which is the the last question, which was posted well yesterday when I would have run this um, the yesterday's video. So this is like yesterday, basically. Um, and this is uh, back in two thousand eight. So this the distance gives us like. Um, you know, like 13 years, 2021 minus 2000, is that 13? Yeah, let's say it is. Um, so we know that the array holds 13 years of, of dates, right? So that's what this total duration is telling us. And so then we get current duration from first date. So, um, you know, from, this is our first date. If we scroll down a little bit, this is probably just a couple days after that first date, so that's like one of these one of these values over here. Um, this is just a few days after the the um, the first question, and I use that um, to calculate this percent. So I say what is like eight days divided by thirteen years, and that gives us the percentage uh, through the through the screen through through the width of the window that we want to be. So. Um, for example, when I get to the halfway point, the current duration from first date is going to be like, what is it, like six and a half years, like half of 13. And so that 0. 0.5 is going to be, that's going to give us like the value in the middle of the, of the screen. And so that's how we know where our current X is using this lerp function, which right now it's just going to be width times current percent. But again, I might change this in a second. Um, okay. So, so that, that's kind of how, how it currently functions. And then I just draw a line. I draw a single line from uh, the current X value, which I calculate using that percentage. And then I draw it from height uh, to height minus, I've called it current height, which is like the height of the bar or the height of the line. And then each time I'm just increasing the height of the line by 0.1. This is kind of arbitrary, but it, it ended up looking kind of, kind of okay, actually. Um, because each time that I see a date, my my total is just going up by one. So I've said that one one post is or one question it equals 0 0.1 pixels. So every ten posts, it goes up by one pixel. Um, many different ways to do that, and I probably won't stick with this way, but I at least have something showing, and that's that's always step one. All right, let me think about this. Um, what do I want to do next while I drink my soda? So it, it already looks pretty good. Um, what I might do is um, constrain the, the Y. So how do I want to do that? Um, okay, I think I might create some variables for myself to make it a little easier. So this variable I can I can put up at the top, so float total duration. I can create that in setup instead of bothering to create it every time, because I know I know that you know ahead of time. And you know while I'm just messing around, maybe I'll say like done, whatever. Um, what else do I need? I want like a um, like a total height or like grid height or like chart height. So let's call it like, um, I guess chart height in pixels equals, and I want to give that a, a value. So actually maybe let me do it in here. So um, chart height pixels equals, and what do I want to say? Like height minus, I don't know, 100, maybe give it a border or something. Chat height, that's not right, chart height. Okay, so I'm going to use this variable, you know, somehow. And a mm -mm, few ways I could do that. I know I'm going to keep saying that, but um, I'm 
trying to think of how I want to do it. So I could like draw my whole chart to like a P graphics or something and then draw that P graphics to the screen. Um, meh. Um, I, I, I don't hate that idea because then I don't have to mess around with like calculating the border myself. Um, but that might make my job a little harder uh, in other ways down the road. So I think I'm gonna stick with just drawing straight to the to the canvas, to the screen. Um, do I wanna do chart width pixels while I'm here? You know what, why not? Chart width, width pixels. And I can do kind of the same kind of deal. Chart width pixels equals width and you know maybe minus 100 again. It's kind of arbitrary, but I did I do the exact same thing again, that's funny. And I think I can get rid of you, maybe. Because what I want is for maybe the very last pixel, or the last date, to, to be at the very top. So right now it's kind of going off the top of the screen, and that's all down to me increasing it by 0.1 each time. Um, I think what I want to do instead is calculate the current uh, current y value. Um, okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. So what I can do is what is say um, actually I can do it this way. I can say like float. I'd say like last y or like last. Um, uh, what do I want here? Um, so I know that there are however many um, values in this, some, some like uh, like 62 something, 62, 75, something like that. Uh, 62, 65. So I could take, uh, what do I want? Um, the height divided by 6265 gives me the value that I want for my, my increasing. It's actually, like maybe let me control Z a couple times because maybe, oh, that's annoying. Oh, uh, that's good. So maybe I do want this current height value and instead of increasing it by 0.1 each time, I increase it by the, the height of my chart divided by 62.65. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I like that. So I'm going to say current height. I'm going to call it like current line height. I might change that from line, but whatever. Um, current line height. And then what do I want? I need um, I need like a delta, so float like uh, one question increment, one question height increment, one question height equals, I don't know yet actually. So what I'm gonna do down here is say, one question height equals what? I want my chart height pixels divided by processing, processing questions dot size, something like that. Oh my God, I keep making the exact same typo. I think the R, key on my keyboard is a little messed up. You know what, let's blame that. I'm gonna blame my tools instead of my own ridiculousness. So I know how how much one question height should be and mm, 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 current line height plus equals, oh, are you like an int? You, what, what, what the heck? Did I do something silly? Plus equals, oh, point, <laughs> that's funny. Um, minus current line height and I haven't actually taken into account the the uh, the width or the height of my of my chart but let's just see what this does so it should go up a little bit more gradually and I think it is kind of won't tell until the very end funny you can kind of already tell that like at the very beginning there weren't very many posts and that's why they're kind of spread out and you can kind of see blank blank spaces from like one question to another probably like many days went by 
um, and then in here it's going up much it's going slower um, like left left to right the speed is slower because of many more questions were being posted in during this time um, that's kind of interesting but it also is super slow so I think what I might do is a trick that I sometimes play um, point draw and I'm going to make like a for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than I don't know, 100, i plus plus. This is just artificially increasing my frame rate. Um, so kind of a hacky thing to do, but it works. So look at that. So much faster. And oh my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> oh, I know why. <laughs> uh, it's because I'm doing no loop here and it's still still like inside the the for loop and it's still calling this even though it, it knows to stop so i think what i might actually do is mm, 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 um can i just return yeah i can i think return so i stop looping let's just see what happens no um mm, 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 why 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 is that Oh, because I need to return out of this whole loop. Um, how do I want to think about that? I could just move this. I think. This getting into Grossville, because this is like, I'm just making my hack work, but I think that'll work. Yeah, okay, no error. And okay, cool. So we can see that the chart now kind of fits inside of, of the window. And um, I'm hoping that this is, this is at like 100. I bet it is because 100, two, three, four, five, maybe. Um, because I've given my, my chart a height of height minus 100. So, okay, that, that kind of works. Um, okay, so what do I want to do next? I think maybe I kind of want to center my chart a little bit better. Um, although my chart width is goofy, why is that? Oh, I know why, because uh, I never actually used this. So um, I need to, where's my lerp? Um, Lerp here, so from zero to width, I need it to be from zero to maybe chart width pixels. Yeah, okay, so now you can see that like it stops a hundred from the um, from the bounds of my window, and hopefully that comes in handy in a second. But what do I need to do? I need to say so I need chart width, so I need like float chart x pixels, pixels equal, I don't know yet, um, flata, that's not, a, that's not a thing. Float, float chart y pixels, blah, blah, blah. And this is kind of gross, but what do I want? I want chart x pixels equals what, like 50? So I have a border of 50 on the left and the right. Yeah, chart y pixels equals 50. Um, because I'm subtracting 100 here, um, same freaking typo, um, giving it a, an x and a y of 50 will kind of move it way down. Is that all right? Um, oh, I know why that's going to happen. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking ahead to like how I subtract it from height here. So I'm going to change this line as well. So current x is not 0. It's actually chart x pixels. And then the Y here, the line of Y. So like, um, so actually height can just be what? Like height minus, minus chart Y pixels. It's kind of a goofy way to do that, but I think it'll work. And then height minus chart Y pixels minus current line height. <laughs> Will that work? Can I clean you up? You do control Z. That's not how I would have done it, but whatever. Um, let's just see what happens. Kind of hoping that it's now a chart with like a border around it, and I think it kind of is. Although, um, this seems a lot smaller than this. 
And it's going to get a gross and annoying. Um, this is the big trade-off of like calculating the border yourself. So I think maybe what I'll instead do is say float border equals and then give that a value up front. Okay. And then calculate it over here. So border, border, and this is going to be, is this minus border or minus border times two? This is going to be border times two. Okay. Short width pixels width minus border types two. I mean, I think that's right, isn't it? Short mm -mm -mm. x pixels, which is my left edge. Two, oh wait, it's not chart, wait. Oh, I know why, I know why, I know why. Okay, so I'm going from chart X pixels, which is 50 to chart width pixels. So I don't want this to be chart width pixels. I want this to be what? I want this to be, I basically want it to be width minus border, right? Which is, yeah, border plus chart width pixels. Bunch of different ways I can do this, but let's do it this way. Width minus border and let's see what that does okay 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 so now i have like a left edge of like 50 right edge of 50 bottom edge of 50 top edge of 50 i, I could be a little bit paranoid and here's something i do sometimes where i actually want to measure this um all right so handy dandy microsoft paint is this about 50 it is it is about 50 is this edge about 50 it is is this edge about 50 it is and finally is this edge about 50 it is okay so that, that's that's working um beautiful microsoft paint to the rescue so my chart is is kind of charty <laughs> um it's kind of got an interesting uh kind of pattern and what do i want to do next so Mm -mm -mm. I could, I could kind of mess with these, um, these like weird like artifacts. I don't really want to show this missing data. Um, so what do I want to do with that? Um, I think maybe I'll just draw like a, a polygon maybe instead of drawing a line at each one I'll draw a polygon I'm trying to maybe I should double check this and think about what I actually want to show so do I want to show like a, a, a filled graph like this or do I want to show like just a line at the top um, or do I want to show I don't know maybe some combination where it's like a thick line at the top and then the rest is filled in. Yeah, maybe. Let me maybe steal some inspiration from this. So yeah, it's like a thick line at the top and then, um, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Um, okay, here's what I wanna do. Um, I want to, get like the previous values and then draw like a polygon and maybe draw the top line as well okay so a couple ways um i could just take the last date i could just calculate it in here um and Hmm. Or I could, instead of drawing it directly to the screen, each frame I could build a whole polygon. Hmm. 
Mm. Nah. I think I'll just stick with this. This is a little easier. Um, so I could keep track of my, my previous date, or I just could get it from here. Do this minus one, or I could keep track of the previous x and y, since I can pretty easily store that. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, first off, I want to start my current, where's my current index? So oh, it's up here. I'm gonna start that at one instead of zero because I wanna draw like a, I wanna draw a polygon. I wanna draw a, what do they call it? Quad, I think in, in processing quad. Um, quad with the four points rather than a single line so I can kind of connect the, ouch, the previous, um, the previous point. Yeah, okay. So my index is gonna start at one so that I can get the previous one at zero. Okay. So what can I do? Current date, so previous date. Um, what I can maybe do is maybe have a function that returns what a, a point, an x and a y. Sure, so like a p vector, get point, get, get point from an index or from a value, so date, from a date. And um, I'm gonna need some of this logic. So I've got current date, I need this stuff. And where do I calculate my Y? Get point, so why aren't you complaining? Oh, you're complaining because this. Um, so turn new P, P, vec P vector, just so that stops complaining. Sure. Oh, oh <laughs> so funny. I'm so used to uh, JavaScript. Um, I need to type here. Okay. Um, so it's going to be date. Yep. And current x. This can just be x. And is this right? Sure. And where's my y? My y is this. Yes, my why is this? And this actually needs to be border. I mean, it doesn't matter, but just to stick with one, one way of thinking about it, and then this can be x, y. All right, so current date, and then I need previous date maybe, and previous date, prev date, equals blah, 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 current minus one, and then, yeah boy, here's what I can do. I can say p vector prev point equals get point prev date. Did I capitalize that? Of course I didn't. Prev date, p vector current point equals get point current date. I'm just like refactoring the code so that I can do the same same thing for two points without you know copying all of this logic for both. Um, I'm sure I'm breaking something, but that's okay. So what is this going to be? So I've already got my current x. So okay, instead of line, uh, do I want to delete this? And uh, maybe just let me start over. So quad, I'm going to give it four points. And let me say that I'll start in the lower left corner, which is prev point dot x is the x value and height minus uh, chart border or just border is the is the lower left corner of my of my quad. Okay, and maybe I'll just go clockwise. So 
the top left corner is what? Is prev point dot x prev point dot y. My next, so the upper right corner is going to be like current point dot x current point dot y. And my last lower right thing is going to be current point dot x height minus border. Here, yeah, boy. Um, why are you complaining? Oh, duh. Okay, so now I've drawn my quad and I don't need my line anymore. Uh, do I need my current line height? Do I use that anymore? I don't think I do. Oh, I do. I do here. Um, fine. I'll just keep it in there, see what breaks. Um, whatever, let's see. This might look gross. Um, okay, something, something changed. I still see this weird, these weird artifacts. I don't love that. I was trying to get rid of these artifacts. Why are you there? Hmm. I'm doing quad. What happens if I do like no fill? What do you look like? Guess it won't really matter because most of these are sub pixel so really we're just seeing the outline anyway oh um i wonder if i do the opposite so what if i do like fill zero oh okay yeah, yeah that makes perfect sense actually so what we were seeing was the the quad that we were drawing just was large enough that you could actually see the uh um like the inside of it because the fill value is, I don't even know what it is, like white probably by default. Um, okay, it also means that it's gonna be kind of really annoying to make this a different color. But maybe that's okay, maybe I don't care. Or at least don't care for now. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to that later if I feel like it. But I mean, for now we have, we have something that kind of works. Um, so, what I might do next is play with some colors maybe, or um, maybe show labels. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do labels. So uh, how do I want to do that? I want to maybe just keep it real, real simple. So it's gonna be like 13 years of data from 2008 to 2021. And maybe I just want to show a few, a few choice years. So like maybe 2010, 2015, 15, 20, 20, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so how do I wanna do that? Um, oh, I could, well, a few ways, a few ways I could do that. I could look at the data itself and like at each step, I could say is the current date, so like is the current date the first question that we got in a certain year? And if it is, then I draw, you know, something. I draw a line down here in the in the lower, uh, in the lower border here. I could also calculate that ahead of time. Mm, yeah, maybe. So. I could just figure it out ahead of time, like what was the Unix time of January 1st at you know 2016 or whatever, and use that value to, to draw the line. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of think that's a, maybe an easier way to do it. So, sure, let's do that. So I'm gonna go over here maybe and um, date to Unix time stand up, sure. And what did I say? I said like 2016. So 2016, one, one, hey, stop. One, one, zero, zero, zero. It's maybe going to be a couple hours off because of uh, time zones and whatnot, but whatever, it's fine. So I can say 
this is my timestamp for 20, 2015. I thought, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 2015. So maybe what I do is what is. Do I want an array or maybe a map of values to keys? Sure, let's do it that way. So I'm gonna see like a hash map of integers to strings, and I'm going to say like label map, label map. And I can set that equal to a new hash map up here. Map. Okay, and then down here I wanna say label map dot put and there's my timestamp and that's 2015 that's good enough just to test something and then what do i want to do i want to say down here in draw maybe mm, although do i want it to try to think of how i animate it yeah i can think about that in a second so i'm stepping and maybe i'll just do it here so for integer uh, date of oh man so javascripty in uh, label map dot key set is that what it is yeah so what I can do is oh can I oh I have a get point so I really only care about the x but do I dare do I dare use this function. I might, I might dare. So P vector. Um, okay, so I can call this um, get get. What did I call it? Get date probably. Get get point. Get point uh, with my date. Um, P vector uh, label point equals get point. And then what can I do? I really only care about the x value because like that gives me the left and right. I'm being a little lazy here whatever um, mm -mm -mm. but that means that I can say just for funsies I'm going to say um, so I've got my label point which has an X and I can say something like line so uh, label point label point dot X to for a Y value of what uh, height minus border and I want to go from that to well label point dot X height uh, minus, I don't know, border divided by two or something like that. Okay, so now I should expect to see, uh, so this is 2015, I should expect a line to appear somewhere, so this is 2008, this is 2021, so somewhere in the middle, I should see a line kind of appear in the bottom, so let's test that out. And I do. So this is 2015. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I can do what? I can do text maybe. So like text and what's that one? That one's like label map dot get date. Um, I've got my X. Do I? Do I have my X? Actually, let me do text mode uh, somewhere. Maybe up here. Text mode, center, center, so that I don't have to calculate offsets and whatnot myself. I can just center it wherever I want it. And so text that um, label point dot x, and then my y is going to be what, like height minus border by two. Again, like just put it down here. I can play with this in a second, but let's just get something working. Oh, what? What text mode? No, is it just center? Okay. Uh, that didn't work. Text mode. Not supported. How dare. Uh, processing. Processing Y. What is it called? Text mode. Text align is what I wanted. Oh, 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 oh. Text align. Center, center is what I wanted. Center, center. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, okay. So my line is kind of overbearing, but um, it's actually doing what I want. So maybe instead of divided by two, I say, uh, what? 
what, times 0.75 maybe. Yeah, okay. So I don't hate that. Let's see where 2016 puts us. Can we do every every year or would that be dumb? Um, 2016, oh, that's easy enough. And again, this might be off by a couple hours, but for my purposes, I, I don't care. I don't think it would actually make a difference. It'd be less than one pixel. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Label map dot put, uh, this is 2016. So because of how I've I've already like stored it in a hash map and I've already used my loop, hopefully that just magically works. Okay, okay. That's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And, I, and what I might end up doing is actually increasing the width anyway. So maybe that's 800. Spread them out a little bit. Yeah, cool. I'm into that. Okay. So let's just let's just do the rest of the years real quick since it's not too hard. So 2017. I am sure there's a smarter way to do this. In fact, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> I could just like, you know, I know how many milliseconds are in a year, so I could just add them, but whatever. 2017, 2018. It's not that many years. If we were calculating like hundreds of years of uh, of data, then maybe I would do it smarter. But this is fine. Um, 2019. Oops. Label map dot put blah blah blah. 2019. Let's just check in. See if that looks looks like what we expect. Yeah, man. Okay, cool. Okay, let's keep trucking. 2020. Keep doing that. And go back to, uh, do I want 2021? I do. Convert 2021. Oh my god. 2021, that's, uh, yeah, I don't think I need to go into the future, not yet. Label map dot put something for 2014. Um, you know, maybe this is kind of annoying since it's going to be, uh, I'm just going to close this because I keep doing that. Um, I think it goes all the way back to 2008. So maybe I'll do like, all right, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay. So 8, actually let me not forget where I am. 2008, 2009, 2010, Two more, 2012. Mm -mm -mm. So again, there's a smarter way to do this. I could have done a for loop and calculated these dates myself, but part of my goal with all of these videos is to show sort of the, the reality that, you know, if I'm coding here by myself, I'm, I'm probably just gonna do it this, this dumb way. Um, so, I think it's kind of important to show that process. Anyway, let's do this. Okay, cool. So my 2008 is um, is kind of off the, the edge of the screen because this date is somewhere in 2008, but like there, we don't actually have data for that, so I'm actually gonna get rid of that. All right, what are we looking at here? So I'm already pretty happy with that. Um, now, now what do I want to do? I want to play with like the, so first of all, I, I get kind of annoyed by how 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's a processing artifact or, or an artifact of the render or an artifact of like anti-aliasing. But these these text always looks really gross if you don't draw a background. So, um, where do I want to draw a background? It kind of doesn't matter. I think I just want to do it here. It's so like background of just to start with. Let's make it gray. Um, whatever. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Of course. Yeah. It's super annoying. Um. Okay. Well, because of how I'm drawing to a to the screen directly to show the animation, I can't draw my background uh, every single time, which is annoying. Um. Well, I could bust out a P graphics. I could, I could switch over to drawing a polygon. I could, I could do lots of things, but what do I want to do? Okay, I think. I think maybe I want to draw to a P graphics. How do you think about that? So I just draw to a P graphics. I could draw it from scratch every time. No, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, let's draw a pre P graphics. So um, mm -mm, maybe here P graphics PG. This is going to get a little gross. Bear with me. Um, size so PG equals create graphics width height and everything else needs to be pg dot and this is it's okay but it's kind of yucky so background i think can stay and no loop can stay here i want pg dot do i need to call like begin draw end draw i think i i think i will um pg dot pg dot oh is that the only that's the only drawing I actually do. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see what what breaks horribly. So draw, I have background, and then I just want to draw the, the uh, PG. PG, zero, zero. It's already width and height. Okay. Let's see what this breaks. Yep, cool. What'd you break? Probably begin draw, end draw. No point or exception. Cool. On, on what line? unknown but it's probably the begin draw and draw let me check the reference right quick begin draw wait begin draw nothing oh it's in p graphics probably p graphics yeah i need this begin draw thing i think i only need it here well, in step in, so maybe here, pg dot begin draw and then pg dot end draw down at the bottom. pg dot end draw. Maybe play. Yeah, sort of. Um, I think I missed something. Oh, this needs to be pg. pg dot. Let's see what happens. And. Okay, a little bit better, maybe. Oh, you know what? It's still gonna do that stupid text thing. Um, okay, you know what, actually, let's make this. This is really gross, but um, let's just, just bear with me for a second. I'll, I'll get it straightened in a second. Um, you know, here we go. So, PG dot text align. I need this to be just text align. I want to get something working, and then go back and explain why it's working. Okay, that's uh, what. <laughs> so draw is happening each time, and I'm drawing the P graphics, which should work. And then I'm drawing the lines down here. So here I need like a fill of zero. Fill of zero, that's why the text was white anyway. 
Okay, why does it disappear? Oh, it's because of this return. Which I can turn into a break. Okay, good enough. Um, all right, to, to go back and explain what, what the heck I just did, um, I was really annoyed by the, the weird artifact of the text kind of being kind of blurry. And the reason for that is there's some like, uh, basically like semi-transparent pixels around the text. It's like anti-aliased. And if you draw that over top of each, like if I draw 2016, over top of the previous 2016, over top of the previous 2016, then those those transparent pixels kind of add up over time, and they look they look really gross. Look, they look blurry. So I needed to draw the background uh, of my of my whole whole window before I drew the text. And the way I chose to draw the text was to draw it every frame, um, which meant that I needed to draw the background every frame. But of course, since I'm drawing the the chart directly to the canvas, then um, when I call background, I'm actually clearing out the previously drawn chart segments. And so you would see that like flash of only the current date and, and that's it. Um, so to get around that, I drew my chart to a P graphics and then drew the P graphics to the screen and that that worked to fix the problem with the chart but then i had the exact same problem with the dates and so what i did was i moved the dates off of the p graphics back directly to the to drawing directly to the um to the window or to the canvas and that that works it's a little little gross a little grimy uh, again if i was like writing this code to uh like showcase best practices and, and whatnot, then I wouldn't do it this way, but that's not my goal here. My goal is to showcase how I would actually do this, you know, just coding on a Saturday afternoon for fun. I'm not gonna sit here and like worry about best practices. I'm just gonna get something working because my end goal is not this code. My end goal is this chart. I wanna post this on, on Twitter and, um, you know, as part of my processing celebration, so. I'm going to post the code just for like funsies, but you know, it's not my, not, not the focus anyway. Um, but now the year's working, I'm actually really happy with how the years turned out. Um, I might, if I'm thinking about posting a, a, an animation, um, I might not show the dates from the beginning. Let me slow this down and see what it looks like. Mm, so I'm kind of wondering like what if the dates kind of popped up with the with the animation and nah that doesn't I don't think I need that I think I kind of like the the dates from the beginning or maybe I'm just being lazy so um, a couple things I can do here so first of all I'm gonna play with the colors so I want what color do I want I think I want to steal this like blue color so Here's, here's another thing I do sometimes to steal a color, steal you, steal you, go to paint, and there's my RGB. So I can do, maybe I'll do down where I actually draw the thing. So instead of pg.fill zero, I'm gonna do pg.fill, what, 39. 101, 214, and can I do just no stroke or something? PD, PG dot no stroke. Maybe. Let's see what that does. Hey, don't be gross. Hey, stop. So, oh, now it's nice and blue. Um, oh, it's kind of kind of weird. I wonder why that is. I'll, I'll, I'll look at that in a second. I don't know if you can tell in the in the video, but there's this weird like vertical kind of artifact is an artifact of how I'm drawing my shapes. I wonder if I do um, pg.stroke of the same thing maybe. Or maybe I can turn off um, anti-aliasing. Maybe that'll also help. Because I think the whole problem is like sub-pixel rendering. Actually, I think that, that fixed it. Okay, good enough. Cool, cool. Yeah, I like that. So. From here, maybe I add a, a 
title to my chart. My my middle school math teachers are are, are yelling at me in my in my subconscious right now. Always title your charts. It's in my brain for some reason. So where do I want that? Um, it could go in the P graphics. It could go directly to the canvas. I don't think it actually matters too much. Mm, let's just put it up uh, up here. So I want to do like text and um, maybe like processing questions, processing Stack Overflow questions, processing questions on Stack Overflow over time. Does this have a, does processing have a handy like X, Y with height thing for text? Do you take X, Y with height? You don't. Do, you do, you do, you do. So X, Y with height. Um, this one. Yeah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, processing questions on Stack Overflow over time. And my X is going to be, I don't know, 100. Um, my Y will be 100. My width will be, I don't know, 300. And my height, I don't think the height actually matters. So let's just see what this does. Okay, that's something. Processing questions on Stack Overflow over time. I want to move, wait, why is it? I would not expect it to be that far down. 100, 100 should be like up here. Uh, why are you, why are you weird? Let me just for funsies do mouse X, mouse Y. Just to understand how these parameters are working. Oh, why, why is it like offset like that? Probably because of the width and the height, I'm guessing. So, what happens if I decrease you? I want to actually see it wrap. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, I wonder if I can also just do processing questions. Can I do like a new line here? Uh, maybe. Can I delete, can I delete this stuff? Will that be smart enough? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, cool, 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 cool. So processing questions, new line, on stack overflow, new line over time at mouse x, mouse y for now. But, oh, cool, that, that's actually pretty good. And I can take it out of mouse x, mouse y and put that back to like 100, 100. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Now I just need to like actually position that somewhere. Um, maybe I'll text size what, like, I don't know, 72, nice round number. And then down here, say text size, I don't know, 18, something like that. See what, what, what how horrible that looks. Oh, beautiful. I actually like 18, that's pretty cool. 72 is way too big though. How do we feel about 36? I don't hate it, but it's just off. Um, so this needs to be much larger, like 300 maybe. Processing question on stack overflow over time. Maybe a little bit to the left. And here's where we get into like diminishing returns. This is gonna stop being interesting because I'm just gonna fill around with pixel values. And I can just do that, you know, after I actually close the video down. But this is not terrible. I don't hate this. I think I like the blue. I think I like the, uh, um, I don't know how I feel about the background, but so let's maybe change the, this, the, the text color here. So where'd my blue go? Where do I draw that? I draw that here, text size, maybe stroke. I never remember which one I want. I think it might be fill. Yep, it's fill. 
<clears throat> okay, that's that's way too uh, uh, like light on light, but maybe I decrease this quite a bit. I'm gonna take this down to darker. Pressing question on stack overflow over time. How do I feel? Mm, what's it look like if I do bold? I think that's what text mode is. Text mode bold. Is that right? Nope. Oh, that's not at all what I thought it was. Text font. Definitely text something. Text side. No, text text uh, text font. Can I just say like, hey, make this bold? Mm, no. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. It doesn't matter. I'm being a little bit picky. Rainbow bold doesn't exist. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, let's see. Um, what else do I want to do? I want to change this from fill zero to fill two five five. Maybe make it white. Maybe make my line white. So this is stroke two fifty five. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I mean, I could post this and, and be be not upset by it. Um, <laughs> I love that, like, that's as good as my, that's that's the highest compliment I'm gonna pay myself. It's like, I could post this and not be completely ashamed of, of it. Um, so ridiculous. So I could either post, you know, this final output as a uh, you know as my as the thing i post for for processing his birthday or i could um, post the animation itself so output each frame and um you know spin that into a gif and post that gif on twitter or whatever could do that could do both actually um Okay, so this is about where where I would where I would kind of be finished. So um, there are a couple other things I want to do actually. Now I'm I'm debating whether I should do them in this video or if I should do them in a follow up video. Um, mm, let me look at the time. So this is like kind of seeing behind the scenes how this works. Um, I have been going for an hour 14. Um, you know what? I think let's keep trucking. So I'll say that like, if you're getting sick of this um, and you got what you wanted out of this video, then feel free to stop here. Um, what we did was we took the uh, massaged data file, which in our case was a JSON array of dates. We took that file and we wrote processing code that for each of those like data points it did something in our case we we drew one one little part of our of our chart and um then we then we did the things like add the dates in the in the title and whatnot um and so you can use this exact kind of approach to to make your own data visualizations. So maybe it's not Stack Overflow processing questions over time. Maybe it's, I don't know, global temperatures over time or something completely different. I don't know. Um, but the, the idea would be the same, to massage the data into a format that you can easily work with and then to um, write code that draws something to the screen based on that data. That's the core of data visualization. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to feel free to stop watching now. <laughs> but I'm going to call this like bonus bonus content, bonus extra content from here on out. So there are two things I want to I want to do. 
the first thing I want to do is I want to add p5.js to this chart. I've got processing and that's cool. I love processing, but I also want to kind of tell a story and show where, um, how p5 kind of, kind of entered the scene. And the other thing I want to do is actually show creating a GIF out of this. Um, okay. So how do I want to do that? I think I'm going to start with the P5 piece. And there are two ways I can do that. Um, I basically want to do the exact same thing with data that I actually already got. I already massaged this data in the last video. So I already have P5 questions over here, this JSON file, which will look very similar to our, our processing file. It's just a, a big array of dates. And so I, so I have the access to that and so I can visualize it, but I want to visualize it in the same kind of, on the same screen, in the same chart. Um, so my big question is, do I want P5 to show up like as this is showing up or do I want to draw processing, let that complete and then draw P5? Um, I think I, want to draw p5 at the same time and okay yeah all right i think i'm, I'm beginning to form a plan and i think actually funny enough like that p graphics thing was was totally just a hack to fix the uh the text um issue but i actually think it's going to come in handy um yeah, because what I can do is I can draw processing the processing graph to one of my P graphics and then draw P5 stuff to a different P graphics. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. So let's do that. So let me change this to processing P graphics, PG, PG, processing graphics, processing PG, whatever. Um, let's do it that way. Let's fix the errors that we inevitably get. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I'm gonna draw processing and then I'm gonna draw P, P5. Um, I'm making some assumptions that P5 is going to be smaller numbers. Um, I don't actually know if that will matter, but that's an assumption that's in my brain. We'll see what happens if it ends up not being true. Um, but processing had like, you know, many years a uh, head start. So I'm guessing that the numbers for processing questions are higher than the numbers for P5. Um, but we'll see. Okay, so let's just double check that this works. It does. Man, I'm into this. I think this is kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I can think of other ways to uh, to play with it, but um, I think it works. Okay. So, uh, uh, what do I want to do next? I want to maybe just do the exact same thing with P5. So, P graphics, P5, PG. So cute, so small. Oh, P5, PG. I kind of hate this variable name for a bunch of different reasons, but that's fine. I'm not gonna be too picky. Where do I make you here? P5 PG equals create graphics with height. I could probably just draw everything to one P graphics or draw everything to the screen, but this actually, it helps me kind of think about it. So for, for that reason, more than any other is why I'm doing this. Um, all right, then I got a bunch of setup and then I'm gonna eventually wanna draw my P5 P graphics. Zero, zero. Um, so what do I want to do next? Mm. Okay, so here's here's one thing that occurs to me. I don't want to I don't want to start drawing the P5 chart at the same time as I start drawing my processing chart because the processing chart starts all the way over here p graphics uh, p5 is going to start somewhere over here 2014 i think um so i don't want processing to be over here and p, p p5 to be over here and that would look goofy um or maybe i do as a just to get something started um 
and then I adjust it. Well, how do I want to fix this? I think that we would just take whichever one is oldest. Hmm. Is that right? Kind of like a, a merge sort type deal where we have two arrays. We have the processing dates and the P5 dates. And we have an index for each one. And we just increment whichever index is currently oldest. Uh, yeah, I think that would work. So uh, uh, what do I want to do? <laughs> That's another good t-shirt idea. Last video I said that I should make a t-shirt that just says hit run and see what breaks. I think another t-shirt would be me asking what do I want to do? Because I never, I never remember. I never know. Um, where's my questions? Processing questions. All right, so I'm going to repeat a lot of this. I could maybe put this in an object, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Here's another one. Mm, and then int current p5 index, ugh, gross, equals one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I've got my P graphics, and then I've got my first date, last date, and my duration. Okay, so my first date is going to stay the same. It's definitely always going to be the first processing question because that was all the way back in 2008. My last date might might not be processing. It's whoever was last. And so I think I want max of either processing questions dot blah, 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 or this whole thing in the P5, P5 questions. P5 questions, P5 questions. With the data I have now, I could just look this up and, and hard code it, but I kind of want this to be a little bit future proof. Um, so this will work even if I eventually update it. What, what are you complaining about? Missing semicolon. Well, of course there's a missing semicolon or missing P5 questions, P5 questions. P5 questions. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Did I not load you? Of course I did not. Processing questions equals blah. P5 questions equals blah, blah, blah. P5 questions. Okay, so I've loaded my questions from both files. I got my first date, which is always going to be the processing, uh, the first processing question back in 2008. My last date. It's going to be whichever one has the is the bigger either it's either the last processing question or the last p5 question whichever one is bigger you know i could look it up manually but i want it to work even if i update those files um the duration is going to be the same so it's going to be last date minus first date so that's how long our our data range is i don't think any of this stuff needs to change in terms of future proofing, you know, there's one one reason to not do it this dumb way is for future proofing. But whatever, if I ever come back and update the data, I can update this as well. Um, then I've got my draw where I draw a background and then I draw my images and then I draw my text. Then I then here's where I draw processing and um, okay, here's where here's where stuff might change. And also, this can move up, I think. You can be up here. Not that it really matters, but kind okay, of just checking that it still works. I haven't broken anything horribly. Looks good enough. And okay, so, okay, got to think about this for a second. So I've got my current processing index. Do I have my current P5 index? I do. So what I want to do is I want to draw one, I want to either draw processing or P5, depending on which one is uh, older, right? And let's see. So what I can do is, so first of all, this is going to be wrong. This is not what I want to stop anymore. So, um, Let's worry about that in a second. 
so processing PG, I can do p5pg.begin draw as well, since I'm going to be drawing to at least one of them. p5pg.begin draw, or wait, end draw. Okay. Um, maybe I'll put them in order. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so maybe in step is where I figure that out. Um, let me think about this. You know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do something a little bit gross. I don't know how gross it is. Maybe it's not too gross actually. Um, well, it's a little gross, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna say step processing. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna copy it. <laughs> this is where it gets gross. And I'm going to have a step P5. And everything in processing is gonna be in P5. So I'm, I'm gonna like do the exact same thing I have been doing. I'm gonna do it for P5. P5, current P5 index. Um, this will stay the same, this will stay the same, and this will be P5. So it's actually not too bad. I mean, there are a couple different ways I could have uh, refactored this. I could have maybe put it into a function that takes a P graphics, and, but whatever. I think that's going to be the same current line. Oh, one question, is that is this still going to be the same? Let me think about that in a second. Um, I think it will because, well, actually, so I know that processing has more questions and right now this one question is based on the total number of processing questions. And so I think that's right. I think maybe over time, if P5 ends up having more questions, we'd have to change this, but that, that wouldn't happen for a few years. So this is, this is okay. Um, whatever. Is there anything processing-y in here? No, there's not. Okay. So now what I can do, so here where I step, I can what? I can say if, so I want to think about this in terms of how we start. So if process, pro, processing questions dot get int current processing index is what is less than p5 questions dot get int current p5 index then i'm going to do something otherwise i'm going to do something else and that something and something else is i want to step processing here i want to step p5 here so if my processing date is older then my P5 date, I'm gonna draw the processing, the next processing little, little section of the chart. Otherwise I'm gonna, if, if otherwise if P5 is the older one, then I'm going to draw the P5 one. And my, my whole plan with that is that P5 will show up like at the right time in the animation. And then here's where I need to change this. Um, if current, Oh, I think I just need the exact same thing. I need an and blah, 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 current P5 index is greater than P5 questions. So then I break out, okay? I'm sure something will break horribly. Let's see, and actually um, in my P5, I need this to be like, I'm gonna change this color, but for now, let's just draw it black or something. Sure, let's just run it, see what happens. So I should see, oh, ooh, ooh, weird. Okay, I know what's happening. Huh, cool. Um, so P5 shows up right around uh, 2014 and there's some, some, some ridiculous stuff is happening. Uh, first of all, 
P5 should show up like as a little small section of the graph and instead it's showing up at the very top and we're going off the top of the screen and we are we are hitting an error. So let's fix those one at a time. So first, um, I know why that why, why the P5 thing is filling up the the whole chart and that's because I have current line chart and I need this to be like current processing line height. And I need float current p5 line height equals zero. And where are those errors? So get point. Ooh, ooh, gross. This might. This is going to be yucky. So step p5. This needs to be p5 line height. And this needs to be processing line height. And here, get point. Do I call that in both pre? I do. Crap. Mm, current line height. So can I just add you? Current line height. And whoops, I keep doing that. That's funny. Float current line height. So then I can pass that in. Is that right? Now I'm staring at this. I don't know if that's, that's quite right. I think there might be a problem here, but um, because we call get point for previous and next, and this is based off of current line height. So it's really just going to be rectangles. Is that right? It is, but it actually doesn't really matter. Okay, fine. And then what do I need up here? This is processing. So this is current processing line height. Kind of yucky. And then what do I do up here? Get point. Oh, this is where I don't actually even care about the uh, the y, so I can just do zero probably. Unless I divide by it. We'll see, I guess. Again, these are kind of hacks. So this should at least fix this this will fix the one problem. So now processing should or p5 should show up as like Yes, a smaller section of the graph. Okay, that's cool. And I like how you can see how it's growing. Okay, and now let's see if it still goes off the top edge. I think I might have fixed that as well. And cool, I did, but now I have one more problem, JSON array. Okay, um, is that this? Mm. Oh, 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 um, if, oh man. Um, So I only want to check this. If I actually have it. Actually both. Oh man, this is yucky. Um Okay, so this error is caused by this this if statement. This if statement is still being executed even after we've finished one of the charts and I, I can't get the int for the last index because that index is off the, the right edge of the array. Um, so how do I want to fix that? I could maybe put this in a function that's like that has some smarter logic but um, get int if so when do I want to do processing I want to do processing if the if I still have processing questions left and that the next processing question is is less than the next p5 question but I only want to check that second thing if uh, I actually have P5 questions next. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> um, my brain's getting pretty fuzzy. I've been coding for too long. Um, I'm 
sure it's just like another dumb if statement, but what do I want, what do I want that to be? I want it to be, so I can maybe have like another function that gets the next processing date and returns, returns null or something, or returns zero. If I don't have one, would that help? And then I could say, if it's not zero, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, so maybe I can just put that here or something. So like int um, current processing date equals, and then I can say is current processing index less than processing question questions dot size um, and if it is then it's just um, processing questions dot get int um, current processing index and otherwise it's some dumb value of zero maybe negative one something like that okay can I auto-format you? Yeah, good enough. Um, okay, so this will be zero if I don't have a date. And let me do the same thing for P5. I don't know if this is gonna make my life any easier, but we'll find out in a second. P5, current P5 index is less than P5 questions, P5, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I have my values and it's either the value or it's zero. Um, so if what, if what, if current processing date, current processing date is greater than zero and, and I can kind of maybe get rid of some of this, um, current processing date, is less than, ooh, less than, do I want less than? Uh, let me rewrite this and see what, see how I feel. Uh, current P5 date. So what will happen if I'm out of P5 dates first? Uh, this will not be true. Um, okay, so I can maybe throw this whole thing into this. Um, can I do or uh, current p5 date equals zero? Can I do that? Or is that, that's not quite, let's just see. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> Okay, that actually worked. Um, I could really think really hard about whether this is right all the time or if there's a corner case or something, but I think at this point you can probably guess that I don't I don't actually care. <laughs> um, so whatever, that's kind of yucky, but that's fine. And I think I might be just about done. Um, the one thing I, I know I need to do is uh, change the uh, Change the color down here. So let me get what's P5 pink. Let me get this color pink. Ba -ba -ba, P5 pink. And where do I want that? I want that in my step P5 where I draw my my line or my rectangle I guess so really this quad could have been a rectangle the whole time but whatever two three seven thirty four ninety three two three seven thirty four ninety three okay
That's cool. I'm into that. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I could have maybe like done a like a stacked kind of line chart, but whatever. I kind of like this. This is cool. Um, okay. So I'm just about done. I think I'm pretty happy with that. The only other thing I want to do is change the title. And it's going to get annoying because I know I'm going to be picky. I know I can already tell. Um, you know, I want like processing and P5 questions on Stack Overflow over time. And I'm going to be real, real annoying and say I want the um, P5 to be pink. Um, do I want the questions to be a different color? I want Stack Overflow to be orange, maybe. Oh goodness. Um, and I don't think there's a great way to do that. There would be with HTML. I don't think that text will take HTML. Be cool if it did. It might it might in P5. I don't know. Let's just look, see, see what we can do. to specify the color ahead of time. Is this worth it? I don't know if it is. <laughs> it's gonna take me half an hour just to get the, uh, the text aligned correctly. So what happens if I processing and P5 questions, what if I just make it white? Honestly, save yourself some trouble. Don't be so picky. Let me move it over a little bit. I'm gonna be a little bit picky. Maybe move it down. One fifty. Okay. How much do I hate this? You know, I don't think I hate it. I don't think I hate it. Um, I think maybe changing the colors would be cool, but I think it's not super necessary. Another thing I could do is just like make an image, right? Could just you know, switch over to paint, make this an image, then draw the image. Um, No, you know what? I'm not going to care. I think it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I think I'm done. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to do was output this as a GIF. So let me try that. So in draw, what am I doing? Um, I don't want to do every single step. I don't really. Just every frame, I think. And I can do that here. Save frame. And I think it's like one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Dot PNG. Maybe let me save it to a folder. Blah blah blah. Let's just see what this does. So where's my directory? Um, save from now. Semicolon. Sure. Let's just see what happens. This might slow it down. Oh, it doesn't. Well, it might I'll slow it down in a second. But what I'm hoping is happening is that in this F directory, we are saving each frame so that I can stitch those together into a GIF that I then post. Um, are we done? I don't even know. Does the printout done? It does. Okay. So now if I go into F, cool, I should see, I do, all right. So I've got these um, these frames and let's see, if I just open one, can I hit right arrow? I can, so each frame, it, it grows a little bit. And actually, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but you can kind of see an artifact of, of how I'm drawing it. So like, can I zoom in? So like, check out down here. Uh, right now they're even, 
So we've drawn like both the, not the same amount of times, but like we got to the same kind of date. Can I hit right? No, I can't. Uh, can I go to the next one? How to go to the next one? All right, I've got to zoom back out. <laughs> Hold on, stupid windows. Um, okay, so now if I zoom back in, I went to the next frame. So now you can see that like the, uh, the processing chart has kind of increased by one and we did not draw the P5 one because um, I'm choosing either processing or P5 to draw each time. And then if I go right one again to the next frame, then they're even again because I've drawn the, the next kind of P5 step. And that, that pattern continues where um, on the next frame, um, so annoying. On the next frame, like it kind of alternates back and forth. So like now, the uh, processing one is ahead again, and it'll kind of kind of switch back and forth between whichever one's the sort of older one, which keeps them keeps them in check. That's that's a lot of the logic that I just threw at it. Anyway, whatever. Um, what am I doing? I, I lost my track, my train of thought. Um, what I want to do is um, convert that into a GIF, and I never remember, so I actually wrote it down on GitHub. Um, GitHub.com slash me slash happy coding. Sure, sure, sure. On the handy wiki on this um, here. Export as a GIF. So, yeah, something like this. Where I go here, CMD, blah, 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 paste. So I want a delay of what? Eh, 30, I think, is. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see. So this will do some thinking, and it will create a GIF file for me. You can hear my computer heating up, probably. Another way I could have done this is use uh, this handy screen to GIF tool. It's another way I sometimes do it, but if I'm in processing, it's really easy to output these as individual frames. So I usually do it this way if I'm using processing. Okay, that's taking a long time. So depending on the file size, what I might do is like decrease the uh, the size of each of these. I have a like a I don't know a handy tool. If I right click here, I can go resize pictures and, and change the change the size in bulk. That's that's nice. Um, but I want to see the size first. Judging from how long it's taking, I'm guessing that it's going to be uh, pretty big. <laughs> can I see how big it is already? No, not really. That's just about done. Maybe. No, oh, yeah, okay. Um, so how big is it? 12, okay. That's not the worst file size I've ever seen in my entire life. So now I have it as a GIF. So I could post this on, on Twitter or whatever. Um, I might do things like speed it up or 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 play with the uh, the resolution the, the width and the height of it but eh, I think it's fine I might speed it up actually but I can do that after after I like stop the video because me playing around with the for loop is probably not going to be super interesting I'll also probably make it like freeze on the last frame and I'll do that using um, using one of these commands but You've kind of seen the, the the gist of it, so I think I'm gonna kind of. I think I'm done. <laughs> it's been what like two hours, um, and I think I've accomplished most of my goals. So let's check it out one last time. So I have my my data visualization. It is drawing a chart uh, that shows the the questions that have been posted to. Stack Overflow in both processing and P5. Uh, so you can see like P5 is processing's like 
punk rock little sibling coming in at the 2014 mark uh, to uh, to do its thing. And so this is cool. I think this kind of tells a story and I think it's interesting and um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So again, the whole point of this was to celebrate Processing's 20th anniversary or 20th birthday. So if you've found this interesting, check out Processing's Twitter and um, check out some of the other things that other folks are doing. There's there's a lot going on and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'll also say, you know, go ahead and donate to Processing if you can. Throw, throw a few dollars at them because um, it's a great community and a great um, great great group of folks to to support um, but yeah my goal was to take the data that was from the stack overflow API um, and then massage that into a format that I could could work with a little more easily and created these these array files and then I used that massaged data to write code that drew the um, drew the chart, drew the data visualization uh, of, of my data. And I used processing itself to to visualize data about processing. So there's a there's a meta component to it that I, I kind of find uh, kind of funny. Um, from here, there's a bunch of things you could do. You could, you know, maybe maybe processing in P5, that's you know one piece of the puzzle, but there's a bunch of different tags on Stack Overflow that you could explore so like you could compare javascript and java and python and see like compare these top tags and that would be pretty pretty much the exact same code that we already wrote um, just for different different data files and you, you could do it that way um, you could also explore different parts of the stack overflow api so i have focused on questions in a specific tag you could, I don't know, do something like visualize, uh, visualize like which questions have answers. You know, um, I've only said questions in my chart. Uh, another component to this chart could be answers. So maybe instead of like processing in P5, I don't know, maybe there's a dark blue part of this that's like processing answers and maybe a dark pink part of this that's P5 answers, something like that. Um, some other things you could do, um, I kind of shied away from this because it's a little bit self-indulgent, but one of my original thoughts was you could go over to like users and you could visualize the, the, the people who are answering these questions. And um, it's kind of like a friendly competition thing. Me and George have been going back and forth for, for years now. Um, and this rabid 76 guy, he's sort of person, um, they're they're relatively newer to the space and, and they are they're making a bit of a splash as well so it's a lot of fun um, I actually think George is going to beat me uh, in the long run um, but it's it's awesome um, I've actually met George a few times in person now and it, it's really cool to kind of get involved in the community in different ways and Stack Overflow has been been my window into this world um, and has led me to a lot of other things. Anyway, that's kind of me getting rambly, but you could you could visualize something with the user data or you know just check out the other options that are in the in the API and 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 go nuts. Um, cool. So I think that's about it for me. Again, happy birthday processing. Thanks to everyone involved in the processing community that has has made it what it is. It's been it's been a great uh, for me. Uh, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, and, and, uh, here's to, you know, 10, 20, 30, 30 more years uh, with the, with the processing community. Um, but hopefully you got something out of this and, uh, even like showing how messy and not a straight path it is, um, was helpful because I feel like a lot of these kind of tutorials or videos show here's step one, step two, step three, and then you're done. And they don't really tell you that between step two and three, you spend 45 minutes dealing with encoding issues. And between steps one and two, you deal with issues related to like drawing the text in a way that isn't blurry. So, you know, I, I kind of feel like it's it's important to, to show the winding nature of the path. So hopefully this was, you know, something, you got something out of it. Anyway, I, I get rambly at the end of these, but... 
I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'll post this on Twitter and Facebook and whatnot and and have this be my my version of the of the processing birthday celebration. So um, it's it's awesome company to be in. But for now, I will say thanks for watching. Have a great day. And as always, of course, happy coding. <laughs>